some people with their books. So much fun with this biology program, and we get to work in labs and do a lot of research, and it's a lot of fun. Well, I can do it. But one of the biggest problems I have with it is the girls' guy ratio. About three girls to ten guys, and that's on a good day. So naturally, being the person I am, I commented on this one day, and I was like, you know, this is it, right? And one of the guys overheard, and he said, I don't mind. And here comes the best part. He adds on to this by saying, what would women do in labs? They should stick to soap operas or whatever else they do. Two questions. Did I want to hit him? <laughs> yes, I did. Did I hit him? No, I did. I did. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but the point is that besides being ignorant and rude, this guy scared me. It's terrifying to know that there are people out there who strongly believe in truth. <laughs> it's terrifying to know that there are people out there who strongly believe that women don't have a position in scientific fields or technology fields or engineering fields. And they grow up thinking women should stay at home, you know, watching soap operas or whatever else they do. And in, when you start advocating about women's rights and how they have equal stances in technology fields, you know, or science fields, you get, you get told that you're bashing men. And I'm here to say right now, right here, that feminism is me and you, you and I, you and I, you and all you and me. We're equal, regardless of gender. So, that brings me to my topic for today, and that is Rosalind Franklin. How many of you know Rosalind Franklin? You know about Rosalind Franklin. Okay. Over there, we've got two hands. We've got two hands. Okay. So, Rosalind Franklin, chemist. X-ray specialist, uh, X-ray diffraction specialist, and brilliant writer of the day. She went to a school right off the bat. She's from England. She went to a school known as uh, St. Paul's School for Girls. And the school at the time it was really unique because instead of preparing girls for marriage, they taught, they helped girls focus on careers. So at age 16, Rosalind Franklin knew she wanted to go into science, and she went to Cambridge and she majored in phys uh, physical physical chemistry. <laughs> So, uh, after graduating, she went on to do work with x-ray diffraction. And for those of you who don't know, it's when you take crystal structures and x-ray the separate individual parts to find the structure of the atoms. And she, uh, while she was doing this, she came to do DNA structures. Around the same time as Rosalind Franklin were two jokers, James Watson and Francis Crick. And these two guys, they were uh, trying to create a theoretical model of DNA. Well, they happen to come across Rosalind Franklin's X-ray diffractions of DNA. And they take a peek at this through uh, one of her, uh, her colleagues, another joker, Maurice Wilkins, and they finally, they were, they were stuck on the, the model. They didn't know, like, they didn't know how to get that helical formation of the DNA. And looking at Rosalind Franklin's X-rays, they found that the purines and pyrimidines, they're supposed to be connected. So, they find out this, and then they published this. Did they credit those little Franklin? No, they did not. And what happens next? They got the 1962 Nobel Prize Award for Physiology. Watson, Crick, and Wilkins. They did not once mention Rosalind Franklin. And by that time, Rosalind Franklin had actually died from ovarian cancer in 1958. So she would have gone on without being credited. But because he was cocky, James Watson published in his memoir about Rosalind Franklin. And I quote, he said, She Rosie was a bad-tempered, arrogant food stocking who jealously guarded her data. Basically, what you guys said at my program, women should stay away out of the lab, watching soap operas. He discredited her, she said, he said that she wasn't well, unequal to him, she, he said that she just wasn't doing anything beneficial or significant. And so, in, rightfully, in, a, in response to his memoir, a lot of people actually argued in response on behalf of Rosalind Franklin. And they said how what her DNA studies were actually the key point in, in making the model. So she was cheated of the Nobel Prize award. And they even admitted, like James Watson even admitted himself later, that if she had been given more time, she would have found this discovery herself. Now, what I want to get, what, what I want you all to take away from the story is that women are intellectual and social equals. And so 
often you get these you get these stereotypes where they say, you know, women shouldn't go into that, they're more humanities, but you should always consider that women are just as equal, just just as willing, just as smart, just as amazing as men. They deserve to be in the same field as men if they want to. So what we should do now is that we should go out and find out these, find out about these past uh, scientists like Marie Curie, James Bell, and really appreciate and respect them as the professionals that they are in their fields. Thank you.